This is Faith in Action, the program that looks at how people put their faith into action in their everyday lives. Faith in Action is a production of Catholic Radio Indy. Now here's today's program. This is Faith in Action on Catholic Radio. I'm Jim Ganley. Our co-host is Bridget Ayer. Yeah, great to be with you. Hello, everyone. And I want to thank everybody again for the really spectacular effort last week during our big, big event. We uh, normally would have a dinner, as many organizations do each year. We're not able to do that this year because of the uh, virus, but uh, we had an online virtual event and it turned out very successful. One of the things we did was our online auction, and that turned out really, really well. We want to uh, thank everybody who participated. If you were one of the bidders, boy, we couldn't have done it without you, and hopefully you were a successful bidder. But if you were one of the uh, donors, one of the people who donated, or a business or person who donated an item, thank you very much as well. And our major underwriters as well, um, all together, we did make the event a, a big success, and it did replace a good chunk of the money, the funds that we needed to keep Catholic Radio on the air that we would have uh, got hadn't gotten had we had the uh, annual dinner. So a big thanks to everybody. It was a big success, and we surely couldn't have done it without you. Absolutely, it was a it was a great time. I I was un- it was fun too. I, I was unsuccessful in bidding. I should have stayed <laughs> up later. I, I but I'm gonna I'm gonna be going to some of those businesses and going and purchasing their items because there was some really cool stuff like the saintly soaps. I think was the one I really wanted. But <laughs> but I'm not I'm I digress. I digress. So well, this show is called Faith in Action, and one thing um, Jim and I have talked about, and we know is a reality, is that when men specifically put their faith in action it really makes a huge difference in the family and in society and today we're going to be shining a light on catholic men and our guest today is a catholic man (laughs) founder of varsity catholic and director of that um outreach of focus so thomas wirtz is our guest thanks so much for being our guest today welcome to faith in action well thank you it's a pleasure to be with you and I want to talk, uh, I want to start about start the interview talking about uh, Varsity Catholic Outreach. Sure. What is it? Um, how to get started? Why did you kind of get that rolling? Yeah, sure. Starting in 2007, so it's okay. an outreach to college athletes. So our hope is to introduce college athletes in the broader world of sport through them to Jesus Christ and His Church. We do that through mentorship, discipleship. And so we're an outreach of the Fellowship of Catholic University Students. So... Within Focus, we have missionaries all across this country, mostly on college campuses, over 170 of those, a few internationally, as well as parishes. Um, And we have missionaries that that go and meet students on the campus. They're just out there um, saying hello, playing in the murals, going to, for Varsity Academy, going to some of the practices of the sports, eating with the athletes, spending time with them, leading Bible studies, and then walking with them in mentorship, trying to not just introduce them to Christ, but then walk with them on the whole journey of faith, right? It's, it's encounter the Lord, but then, but then live a sacramental life and become an evangelist yourself. Pope Paul VI talked about when you're evangelized, you go on to evangelize as well. And so we're trying to raise up faithful disciples of Jesus Christ and His Church that, that know, understand, and are commissioned to share Him with those around them. So this idea of, of um, you know, Jesus, Jesus had 12 disciples, he invested heavily in three of those 12, Peter, James, and John, in different moments in scriptures. And so we like that model. It's, we think it's a model that everyone can do. Everyone can invest in two, three, four, five, six people and help them to invest in, in two, three, four, five, six <laughs> people in their life. We don't all have to be John Paul II, most of us won't, or a Billy Graham figure, these big evangelists, but we can invest in people and, and in that, spread the gospel and evangelize. And so we do that within focus especially targeting college athletes. It's an area in our culture that the Catholic Church just hasn't been present in systematically. And so 2007, we thought, you know what? Um, there's a lot of evangelical organizations out there working with athletes. I think it's time for, for us as Catholics to step into athletic departments alongside them and serve our Catholic athletes and those that are curious about Catholicism and just want to be, to be formed in a deep, different and deeper way. As we sure. know, our theology and Catholicism is, is rich over the, the okay. centuries, right, of developing theology. And so, okay. so, yeah, starting in 2007, and it's been a joy. College athletes are one of the most exciting, 
most difficult uh, group of, of young men and women to work with, and, and we love it. Now, uh, we mentioned our auction early on as, as a part of our online event this year. We also presented the Evangelist of the Year Award, and it went to Father Guy Roberts, a pastor at uh, St. Joan of Arc Parish here in town. But that's our first annual. We're, we intend to do that each and every year, and it sounds like uh, you're describing an area of evangelism that, well, we hadn't thought about, but maybe for future awards we ought to look into. There you go. There you go. That and would I, be awesome. And congrats to Father. Good for him. Yeah, yeah. It's it's really awesome. Well, tell us a little bit about yourself and your background. Um, I'm guessing sure. you're an athlete. We kind of talked about that before we got started here. Okay. Um, what was your sport? How'd you decide that this was an area that focus needed to kind of maybe branch into? Yeah, those are those are great questions. Yeah, I grew up in Phoenix. Sports was what I did with my brothers my whole life. Basketball was my love, but football was my better sport. So I was a football guy, all-state um, athlete in Arizona there in high school. Went to University of San Diego to play football, played a season there. And I was a wayward child. I was the prodigal son. I was um, raised Catholic but didn't know Jesus. And I would defend him but wouldn't necessarily follow him. And so my experience of college athletics was, was the more hedonistic, just do whatever you want to do didn't understand the purpose, didn't have a deeper motivation. And so after the season, I realized um, I just want to go have fun. And so I, I, I quit and did worse things with my time and ended up losing the scholarship, transferred out to Benedictine College where my brother was because I lost my scholarship, didn't have a place to live. I was just a mess. And thanks be to God, in his goodness, he took me to Benedictine and got involved in rugby because I still wanted to be active and I was a great sport. So just continuing that athletic connection and then encountered Christ through my brother, through other other men at Benedictine that were following Jesus is something I really hadn't seen before. And so through their witness of joy, encountered the Lord through focus as well, a big part of focus, and decided I want to serve the spiritual poverty that I came from and that some of my friends were still in. And then in the midst of it, just still had a heart for athletes. You know this. As a, as a former athlete, there's just there's a connection there. There's a bond. There's a draw. There is. And so, you know, after a couple of years, I just thought, you know, Curtis Martin, who started Focus, still is our CEO, said, you know, we should do something for athletes. Uh, and he said, great, why don't you do it? And I ignored that. <laughs> um, ended up getting a, a fellowship to the Augustine Institute right when it launched. So I was in the first graduating class of the Augustine Institute. And coming out, had committed to, to go back full-time into Focus work and said, Curtis, can we – can we start this? Can we do this athlete thing? And he said, sure. And I went out to Nebraska, talked to the pastor up there, Father Robert Mattia at the Newman Center, and said, can we try this? We don't know what we're doing, but we want to reach athletes. And he said, come on down. And that's where it all got started. And just, just recognizing a void and recognizing um, a connection to that culture, I just thought we should do it. And it's, it's been a learning process, but I think we're getting better by God's grace every day. Now you and mentioned we have amazing missionaries out there. You mentioned yeah. kind of starting out with focus, with focus kind of getting you back on on track, so to speak, right. and branching out from there. Can you know, tell us just a little bit about focus, what it is, and how it works. Yeah, sure. So, focus, the Fellowship of Catholic University Students, was launched in 1998 by Curtis Martin, and uh, with the help of Dr. Ted Shree, Dr. Edward Shree, and Curtis has recognized, you know, the, the college age is an age that very critical in the formation of, 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 of an individual, right? We make decisions that shape the rest of our life, who we're going to marry, what we're going to do. And mentally, and we see that a lot now on college campuses, the formation we receive shapes our worldview. Mm -hmm. And campus ministry needed a little bit of a boost, I think, in general, not all of them. And so Curtis said that we, we really don't go out and evangelize it like the evangelicals are doing through Campus Crusade for Christ at the time, or Navigators, InterVarsity, some of these big, huge non-denominational organizations who thought, well, why aren't we doing that as Catholics? And so let's do it. And so Curtis had this vision of, let's have lay missionaries, recent college graduates, that go out in teams of four, two men and two women, and they evangelize through mentoring, raising up men and women that can mentor and become evangelists, like we talked about at the beginning, right, that can invest. And the, the concept of win, build, send. So through our presence, through our just our relationship loves the people in front of you and to the point where they, they trust you, they know you care for them. And then just like you want to talk about the movie you love or the pizza joint you love, talk about the God that you love and introduce them to Christ. And then through that, there's a cate catechesis process 
And then eventually we want to send them out and say, okay, you, you're ready like the woman at the well. You've encountered the Lord. Go out and share him, and I'll help you, and I'll walk with you in doing that. So, Well, it's really, uh, we uh, here at Catholic Radio Indy had an opportunity to interview Curtis Martin a while back at the SEEK tw- 2019. And oh, yes. You know, it's such a simple formula <laughs> that you right. that you use, and it's so effective, and it was just really helpful um, in reading that book that he wrote, the more recent one. I think it's, I can't remember the title of it. Off- Making Missionary Disciples. Yeah, that's it. I, I was going right? to say that. Yep, yeah. that's it. Uh, I should know that too. Just super, super helpful. But let's talk about your book, um, Pursuing Freedom, Becoming the Man You Could Be. I love yes. the title. Talk about that. What does it mean, becoming the man you could be, pursuing freedom? You know, I, I was a mess as a young man, and um, as I've grown and, and been invested in by, by good holy men, you know, realize that it's, it's easy, and I did this too as a missionary, it's easier to say men, men need to get better. You know, and I think a lot, most of, yeah, not a prophet, but I think most of the cultural issues in our day are the failure of men, ultimately, to live up to what we're called to be. Um, and so I thought, you know, it's, it's easy to say, hey, we got to be better, but we need to give them a, a bit of a vision of what is masculinity, what is Christian masculinity. And so, you know, that's, that's what I went after with pursuing freedom. And it, if we understand the vision, it's one thing. But then, as, you know, as I said, as a quarterback, if you tied my arm behind my back, I'm not free to actually be a quarterback to throw the ball. Mm-hmm. And us as men, if we don't understand certain realities that we live in, if we don't, if we don't strive for certain virtues and characters, we're not free to actually live the vision that God has laid out for us as Christian men. So that's the concept of pursuing freedom um, so that we can be who God has asked us to be. Now, you mentioned freedom, and I think most people, when they think of freedom, that's I can do whatever I want to do whenever I want to do it. And I, I, I guess you can, but th- that's not going to really get you very far in the long run. Right, exactly. Well said. That's it's not really... Of, uh, that's not really ahead, the. That's not really the freedom you're talking about. Maybe ex- explain what freedom you are talking about. Right, right. No, it's a lot of a lot of different things with the title that you could go with. <laughs> um, so freedom is to is the capacity to do what you ought to do, to do what you're supposed to do, not what you want to do. Hopefully, they line up, right? But mm-hmm. so that's the idea of what does it mean to be a Christian man? What is our calling? What's the vision? And then, and then, do I have the freedom to actually do what I ought to be doing as a Christian man? Well, I want to get some more into um, into this topic. We're going to take a quick break right now, and we'll, when we come back, we'll talk more about becoming a man of freedom. You're listening to Catholic Radio Indy, converting the culture to Christ through radio, featuring 100% Catholic programming 24-7. Do your friends a favor. Tell them about Catholic Radio Indy. Alexa, What's the weather forecast for today? Alexa, what time is the Colts game today? Alexa, remind me to pick up the dry cleaning tomorrow. Has Alexa become a part of your daily routine? Then make sure that routine includes Alexa, play Catholic Radio Indy. Catholic Radio Indy. Quick, easy access to Catholic programming 24-7. Just say, Alexa, play Catholic Radio Indy. Catholic Radio Indy. You can hear the Holy Mass every day at 8 a.m. right here on Catholic Radio Indy. Welcome back to Faith in Action. I'm Bridget Ayer. Jim Ganley and I are in the studio, and we are talking with our guest, Thomas Wirtz. He is the uh, Varsity Catholic founder and director um, to kind of get Catholic athletes uh, connected to Jesus. And uh, this is a, a division of Focus Fellowship of Catholic University Students. And we're talking about his book, which is pursuing freedom, becoming the man you could be. And I want to get into this idea of till and keep. What is that? What do you mean by that? Yeah, great question. So it's fun because I, 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 when I first heard this, this is Genesis 2.15, God made Adam, and he's brought him into the garden. And he's shown him the Garden of Eden. And then right after that, he says, it says, Scripture tells us, God... God commanded Adam to till and keep the garden, which, when you first read that, it's, it's a simple, humble, okay, he's, you know, raising the garden, the vegetables, farming, you know, kind of trimming the trees, whatever that is, which is good. It's good, noble work. But when you dive deeper into that, the Hebrew word for keep in a special way, the, the Hebrew word is shamar, 
And there's different ways you can translate shamar. And keep is, is, is a valid translation, but I, th- I think an, the better one, and a couple of scholars have said this, so I'm not a scholar, but a couple others have said this, is guarding and protecting. In fact, when you read the very next use of the word shamar, it's after Adam and Eve have, have um, eaten of the fruit, they've been cast out of the Garden of Eden. It's at the end of chapter 3 in Genesis, God casts them out, so they leave the Garden of Eden, and God puts a cherubim with a flaming sword to shamar the entry back into the garden. So I just I think that's just a, a great context of guarding and protecting. So I think Adam was meant to guard and protect the garden as an aspect of keeping it, which makes tons of sense when you think of, okay, the serpent came after Eve, and where was Adam in protecting Eve? Where was Adam in protecting the garden, keeping evil at bay? And so I think this just gives men a bigger vision of, what does it mean to be a man? John Paul, the, John Paul II talked about the feminine genius. Well, what is the masculine genius? I don't know if this is it, but I think this hints to it, right? This, this vision of, guys, we have to be guardians and protectors of what's good, true, and beautiful in a unique way. And, and then once we understand that, we have to have the freedom to then live within that, that call. Now is Does that make sense? Yeah, and and I mean I could go on so many tangents on that, but I'll, I'm going to stick to <laughs> stick to the task at hand here. So, is the audience for this book Catholic men, or could any man relate to this book? Is what I'm yeah, thinking as great. I looked at it. Good question. I I mean my the 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 man in my mind was the guy that comes comes to mass on Sunday. Okay. And maybe just isn't quite sure of what to do or, or where to go. I, I would hope this would resonate with any man because we're all created by God, so we're all created the same. Um, there's not a lot of theology in it that I think would would confuse non-Catholic Christians. Um, but it'd be very interesting. It's a great question. I, I wonder what a what a non-Christian would think in reading it. Hopefully, it would resonate because it's going to speak to what's the way that God has written His heart. I want to ask you, um, are men not free? <laughs> I mean, that's kind of what the, what the title somewhat implies, is maybe that they aren't, aren't fully free. Well, yeah, that's a great question. I, I don't know each man individually, and you, know, you, don't, you can't judge the inside of people, but based off what I see, um, I would think in general that there's a lot of us just aren't quite living up to that vision to Shamar. So maybe it's because we're not free. I don't know. It's 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 at least a hypothesis that uh, it doesn't seem like we're doing what we're supposed to be doing. So so I'm I'm assuming many of us aren't quite as free as we should be, anyways. Well, what's it like to be a Catholic man in the church today? Is it difficult? Why or why not? Would you say? Wow, I'm giving you tough questions here. <laughs> yeah, I mean i I work in an amazing organization surrounded by amazing people. Yeah, so I'm supported in my faith every day. You have that um, community. You have that right, Christian community right. that is really needed during the times that Absolutely. we live in. But no, I, what I about the average guy, them. you know? Out right, no, the- exactly. I am not the average guy. I'm not as good <laughs> as the average guy. The, uh, I, I think it probably is very difficult. I mean, I know that our culture is not um, supportive of the Christian life. It's attacking masculinity in all different ways. And I, 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 I and that's part of what I hope this book can inspire men of like, hey, it's okay to be a man. It's okay to understand. And here's a vision of what it actually means. So be inspired. This isn't a, an oppressive, hedonistic, misogynistic, not, you know, 1920s vision of masculinity. This is a, Jesus was a servant, you know, and he laid his life down. You know, as Paul writes in Ephesians, like, that's what we have to do. That's intense. Um, he but was, if we don't understand the bigger picture, I think it's going to be harder to fight the voices that are speaking out against us. Jesus was a cool dude, and his coolness was cool like timeless. You know what I mean? So it's like applicable <laughs> to every single age. Well, Amen. And you know, and you know, men look to sports for role sure. models. You know, is that a good place for men to look? Good question. I we do look there. Mm-hmm. Whether or not we should uh, depends on who we're looking at. I guess. You know, as Charles Barkley famously said, you know, we're athletes, we're not role models. And, and there's, there's an element of truth in that. There's also an element where that's not true, because public figures do have a sense, I think, of social responsibility. Um, so they should understand that eyes are upon them, and they should hold themselves to a higher standard. Now, all, not all of them do. So therefore, I think your question, may, 
not all of them are the right role models, at least in certain aspects. Maybe there's a characteristic of, wow, that man worked really hard, overcame something amazing, difficulty in his childhood. Look at him now, like, I'm inspired by that aspect of the story. But maybe his moral life isn't where it should be as, that, as we look on as Christians. Again, not to throw judgment, but based off actions, maybe I don't want to repeat or imitate him. So that's what I would say to that. Well, in your book, you, um, you do use a saint in each chapter. So is that where men should look to the I saints? Think so. I think one of the, one of the greatest gifts the Church gives us, obviously, besides the sacraments, is the saints. Um, they give us the story of how do we follow Jesus Christ, who was God. Well, let's look at it. Let's look at the saints. And so I think their stories are one of the greatest ways to learn, and the saints are a story. And they're a story of a human being that followed Jesus in heroic ways. So I think saints are one of the greatest um, teaching methods, but also the best role models that we can have. That's you, why I chose them. Now, your organization uh, tries to funnel or target the message that you're just uh, telling us here to specifically athletes on college campuses. How do you go about doing that? I mean, they a- athletes are busy people. They hopefully have a you know a course of study they're doing plus practice before practice afterwards games on weekends uh, how how do you make this fit into their life that's a great question it is a tough audience because of their schedule but we do our best to get in their life you know some coaches allow us to be at practices some coaches allow us to travel with a team um, to do bible studies in the locker rooms and so i think it's just trying to get whatever access we can um, to build a friendship, and through that, work with them. And hopefully we have athletes leading Bible studies on their own team because they can do that in the hotel when they travel. They can do that on the bus. They can do that on the plane. You know, they can do that right before practice in the locker room, right? And so that's the hope is that we're actually raising up student athletes to be leaders on their team, to be that chaplain figure, mm-hmm. if you will, mm-hmm. the spiritual captain who's working with um, his teammates and walking with them. But, yeah, it's, it's just trying to find opportunities to be around and be with mm-hmm. them. Because it's not super effective these days to stand on the park bench and just scream and preach. You know, Frank Sheed did that years ago, and I think it yeah. used to work, but yeah. it doesn't work now. you got to get yeah. into their life and, and let them understand the love we have for them, sure. the care we have for them sure. as a person. Are you aware of uh, some success stories of uh, cases where, you know, you've encountered young people who really couldn't care less or didn't know about the Christian faith, the Catholic faith, and have changed their lives because of uh, their encounter with your group? There's stories like that all the time. I mean, it's amazing. God is God is working, and young people still are the same. They still have a heart that's made for God. And a lot of times, you know, it's it's on a mission trip overseas where they see the poverty of someone else, and it just it, it takes them out of their, their world that they, you know, we need to get out of the American... New York City culture, and we need to see what other people live like um, and, and allow that to open our heart. Sometimes it's our conference. You know, you mentioned, you, you interviewed Curtis at Seek. You know, it's, it's being in an environment like that that takes them out of their daily routine and allows them the freedom to encounter Jesus Christ. But all the time, people walk away from life of alcohol, promiscuity, um, and they give their life to Jesus Christ, and it's beautiful. And it's a hope. There's a lot of hope. We should have a lot of hope, but we still have a lot of work to do. No doubt. But you're you're on the front lines there doing it, and that's that's really awesome. You talk about surrender in the book. What does that mean? And talk about the importance of that. And how do you do it? Yeah, surrender. Um, surrendering. So giving up our will, so that the will of our heavenly Father can be done. Mm-hmm. And I, I thought that was an important topic for men because I think there's a tendency for, for many men, not all, for many men to be control freaks, to want to control the people in our life, but also to control our own life, whether that's through being a workaholic or w- whatever aspect that takes nowadays. Um, and it's important that we actually say, Lord, not my will, but your will be done. And, mm-hmm. you know, if we don't do that as men, it's going to be a big struggle in creating a, a Catholic culture for our family, and having a, a holy marriage if we're always trying to do things our way. And so I thought that was just, this just seems to be an issue for men 
we're we're proud, we're stupid, not no, we're not. <laughs> I don't, I'm not trying to throw men under the bus, yeah, I but we can have a tendency to kind of go that way if sure. if, sure. if we're not checked. Sure. Um, uh, but when we surrender, you know, men are men are amazing, and we have an amazing leadership role to play in our families, and in our marriages, and our parishes. And so that's part of my hope with the book is just to, to, to unleash guys so that we can change this culture. Earlier you talked about freedom, and now we're talking about surrender. The two are not necessarily opposites of each other, not necessarily mutually exclusive. I like where you're going with that. Yeah, <laughs> surrender. It's, it's, yeah, when we surrender our life to, that, to, to the Lord and His will that we actually live in the freedom that we're called to, to live in because it's in following his plan for our life that we find joy and peace and, and, and ultimately hopefully heaven. Right. And so when we fight against his will, we fight against his plan. We actually enslave ourselves. And that's ultimately what sin does to us. It enslaves us. Um, so when we surrender to him, that's how we can find that freedom to live as we're meant to meant to be. We have about one minute left. Um, I'd love to hear oh. two, two things in a, in such a quick, quick amount of time. Okay. What'd you learn personally in writing the book, and then where can people get the book? Okay, they can get it at Amazon.com. They can get it at OSVCatholicBookstore.com. That's our Sunday visitor who published the book, um, and other places. And like the name, that. the name of the book again is "Pursuing Freedom: Becoming the Man You Could Be." I think is the subtitle. I should know that by heart. <laughs> Pursuing Freedom. Yeah, you can find it. Um, what did I learn? I learned that. I need to be a better man, and um, and I I hope that we as men can continue to come together and support each other. You know, I was blessed to be part of the video series Into the Breach that the Knights of Columbus produced based off of Bishop Olmsted's document. Tremendous resource for men out there, and so I'm, I'm I've just learned that there's good stuff, there's great men, and uh, we need each other. Thomas Wirtz, Founder Director of Varsity Catholic, a Division of Focus. Thanks so much for being our guest today. Thank you so much. What a joy. You have been listening to Faith in Action, the program that looks at how people put their faith into action in their everyday lives. Faith in Action is a presentation of Catholic Radio Indy. You can hear this episode of Faith in Action again or any past episode at catholicradioindy.org. If you have a suggestion for a guest or topic for a future program, please call us at 317-870-8400 or email jim at catholicradioindy.org.